Okay. So when we when we start a population studies, the first thing that we need to go through is how do we how do we count populations in the first place? We've got to know how we're going to get the numbers before we can start working with the numbers. Now, when we're busy with population studies, um, there is a bit of an overlap, quite a bit of an overlap between human populations and what you guys will be doing if you take geography. And what we're going to do here, which we're talking about animal and plant and other organisms, those populations. So there is overlap there, but the focus for biology, of course, is going to be on organism populations, not human specifically. We're going to get into human populations later, but for most part, we're going to talk about, um, we are going to be talking about organism populations, plant populations, animal populations, insect populations, fish populations, and so forth. Okay, so. Firstly, if we take a look at any population, uh, we have certain parameters that we are going to discuss. And within these parameters, um, we, there's a main four ones. Now, the first one is natality. Natality is births. Okay, then there's mortality, um, and that is deaths. And there's immigration moving into an area and immigration moving out of an area. So if I take a look at any population, a population is the number of individuals in a certain area of the same species. So over here, I'll say, for example, I have a bunch of um, snails. And it's the, the amount of snails in a specific garden, and that's the population. We could also say, for example, it's the amount of elephants in the Kruger National Park, or the amount of antelope, or the amount of the amount of uh, impala on a game farm. And Let's just go through these uh, different um, parameters again. So natality is if there is, if they're having kids and we have births and their population increases, or uh, mortality is if some of them die and then it decreases the population. Immigration is if any of them, if there's anyone coming into the area it adds to the population and of course immigration is when any of them leave the area so to manage populations and predict how to best budget for services for human populations for example number of organisms must be counted in the population and we're going to see for example that um, if we have uh, let's say on a game farm and i have a certain number of impala on the game farm. I can only keep a certain number of impala. If I bring more impala into the game farm and there's not enough food to sustain them, then I'm going to have an unhealthy population. I'm going to have them eating certain of the grasses and finishing them up and then the whole population is going to suffer. Um, an important factor with any population is that we need to get a, a balance with any number of organisms in the population to maintain my biodiversity. Okay, so today we're going to focus on how do we estimate the population size. Now, in certain cases, to estimate a population size is quite easy. For larger populations, for example, if the number of elephants. Elephants are quite large. And so I can actually make a physical count of the number of elephants in a certain area if the area is not too big. The most direct way to determine a population size is to do a direct count of individuals. We can do this with humans via a census. And we actually in South Africa haven't had a census in quite a while. 
But I, I remember during my lifetime, uh, there's probably about three times at least that I remember that we as a, a nation had a census and they actually counted everybody and they come past the census, people come around, they hand out some forms who, um, and they determine who's in each household, how many people in what area, how many people in the suburb, how many people in uh, a town and so forth. And according to that, they can use those numbers then to, to cater for services that needs to be done. Then uh, an, another um, way and some other examples of how we do a direct count, large plants, uh, the number of uh, trees uh, with, on a game farm. Because you can actually take an aerial photo and you can count the number of trees. Or the number of elephants are, are mentioned uh, can be counted with direct method. But a lot of times what we find is that with smaller animals and like insects and they mobile. So when you are counting them, they what they do is they move around. And when they move around, then they, you can accidentally count some of them twice. And so it's a lot harder if it's smaller animals to count them by direct means. And so what we do is we use a sample and through the sample, we use different methods to, to calculate what we think the population size is. Now, the larger your sample, the larger your sample, the, the more accurate your, uh, your judgment is going to be in the end. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these methods. So our first sampling method is called the quadrate method, okay? Um, and a quadrate, I can show you what it looks like, is typical like this, but it doesn't have to be this shape. Now in this case, um, I would probably make something that is about 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters. Um, in other cases, what we could do is that we would actually have something that's about uh, one square meter. And so this is one meter by what could be one meter by one meter. And so you have a single square meter and you'll, what you'll do is you'll take this frame within a large area and you'll throw it around randomly, put it in different places in a field. And then you get an average uh, for per square per square meter, and then you measure the, the total area and you times the average by the total area. And so you can say, okay, uh, the plus minus, there's, let's say for example, there's in every square meter, that one there was 11 plants per square meter, in one there was 10 plants per square meter and in another one there was nine plants per square meter and you'll do these and then we get an average and the average in this case will be 10 per square meter if the area is 25 square meters then there's 250 organisms or little plants in that area and that is the quadrate mesh that they use. Next one. Okay, so let us just give an example of how it works, but I did describe it already to you. The other, uh, other uh, method that we use is a mark recapture method. Mark recapture method. And we have a formula for the mark recapture method, and I'm gonna show you how we do this now in a moment. This formula, works like this. Uh, what you do is you have a certain number of individuals and I'm going to draw some individuals here. Uh, there we go. Let's say these are the individuals of the population. Okay, all around the page. Okay. Now we're gonna judge this population. We're not gonna count them directly yet. We're gonna just say, uh, 
I'm just going to use an example here of you, uh, you capture them a first time. When you capture them a first time, you only capture a few of them. So I'm going to capture you over there and you, and I, I make, I give you a mark, like a paint mark or a tag or something. Then I let, then I let you go, those that I caught. And they start to move around and they move around and everywhere and they mix. Then I catch a second sample. And in my second sample, this is now the second sample. This is a mark sample, the first time you marked. This is my second um, sample, the number of animals I caught in the second sample. And you divide that by the number of marked animals in the second sample. Okay, let's take a look at an example of this. So, over here, we caught 106 fish in a net and we made a clipping, we gave them a mark of a small section of the tail fin where the, and they were released. So M, remember P is equal to M times S divided by T. M was 106. Then a few days later, I let it go and a few days later, I caught another 180 fish. Of the 180 fish, 47 of them were marked. 47 of them were marked. And now you can calculate the population. And so if you follow this formula, you'll see that this population estimate is estimated as 406 individuals. So you mark, you capture first time, you mark every animal that you capture. You let them go. You capture them a second time. And then after that second time, Sepo, I'm going to give you a chance now, okay? You then count everybody that was marked from the first sample, and you get an estimated population. Okay, Sepo, your question, yes. So what does that T represent? The T represents the number of animals marked in the second sample. So remember, you've marked the number of animals in the first sample. That was M, okay? You let them go. Yes. You then capture another sample, and in that second sample, some of the marks, um, some of the animals were recaptured. So T is the recaptured animals, the animals oh. that were marked were, were caught in the first and in the second sample. Oh yes, understand. Okay, and this is typical. They they ask you typically like this uh, when. Um, when you ask a question about uh, about the mark recapture. So let's take a look at this example they have here. There we have a total population. These animals were caught in the first sample. Then you can see we marked them with a little uh, with a little mark on the forehead. Then you let them go, they spread around. You catch a second sample. Here's your second sample. And in that second sample, there was two of them that had a marking from the first capture. So population size is equal to M times S divided by T. Let's work this out now. M, how many were caught in the first sample? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight was caught in my first sample. So M is eight. Second sample. Let's take a look at how many were caught in the second sample. Let me use another color here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight caught in the second sample. So times eight divided. How many were caught in the first and the second sample? Take a look. How many were caught in the first and the second sample? Two. Two. Divided by two. So let's take a look if this is now going to be. Uh, uh, let's take a look at uh, what 
the estimate is here. 8 times 8 gives you 60. Isn't that 64? Correct. 64 yes. divided by 2 gives you 32. So that gives you 32 individuals. So let's for interest sake now go take a look at how close our estimate is to, to the actual population there because we can count every single individual in this case. Let me use a third color over here. Let me use uh, yellow maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. What does this say to us about the method? We have 25 individuals here, but um, I, I, I said in my estimate there was 32. So is this, is this actually a very accurate method? Any comments on that? Would you guys say that this is a very accurate method? Mm, yeah, it is. It is really not it's, it's not perfect. It's, it's anything but perfect. And that's why I also have to remember that what, when we do something like this, the, the higher my sample size, the higher my sample size, the higher my first catch and my second catch, the more accurate my estimate is going to be. The problem is that if I count mice like this, they're going to run around everywhere. And I won't be able to count all of them anyway. So even if I want to use a direct method, like a, a, a physical count, I'm probably not going to be able to get an accurate estimate of the population anyway.